Uh, hi, uh, my name is Dan or DJ. Uh, I am a musician and a comedian. Um, yeah, I like to psych myself out before. So I like to talk to myself in my mind and um, really just uh, make myself really anxious. Yeah. We love to make you laugh. You're very with funny. all the jokes we have. You're very really That's funny. That's why we do what we do. You're very really we funny. We love to make you laugh. You're very really Vancouver, funny. we love your laugh. It's why we are funny. Welcome to the stage, DJ O. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is DJ. I also go by Dan. That's just, like my legal name. I'm queer. The cool thing about being queer is that you can just be like, yeah, my name is DJ. And then everyone's like, okay, yeah, definitely. <laughs> everyone's like, their name is DJ. It's like, yeah, no questions asked. Um, how's everyone's pandemic? I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, right before the pandemic, I was dumped. No, that's fine. No, it was it was great. It was actually like so good. Like it was so good for my mental health, you know. Like, just, yeah, it it's yeah, it's over. That's it's fine. Um yeah. Uh I should have known that we just like weren't going to be a good match for each other though, just cuz like he loves hiking and skiing and camping. And I hate hiking and skiing and camping. Like when I first went onto his Instagram page, like all I saw was like photos of uh, like mountains and like waterfalls and and yeah, it was and trails. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, oh my god! Like, has this guy ever seen walls? Like, just because I love walls. <laughs> they, I'm obsessed with walls. Uh, I am in a relationship now. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice to um, be in love and dating someone who likes me. It's, it's a game changer. <laughs> uh, yeah, cause just because like before him, I would always date these guys that would like ignore me and like ignore all my texts and avoid me and stuff. Like, for example, and and that and that only made me like like them more when they like ignored me and stuff. Um, like for example, once I was logging onto um, my online banking, I was uh, trying to get onto www.bankofmontreal.com. And then um, on Google Chrome, it said www.bankofmontreal.com, and in parentheses, it said not responding. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, I'm in love with bankofmontreal.com. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just like never expected to be in love with bankofmontreal.com, but it happened. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what else? Um, I am a uh, comedian, musician, and actor. Um, in some cultures, I am what people call a triple threat. Uh, what I mean, when I say I'm a triple threat, what I really mean is that like I'm a triple threat to like my own livelihood. Uh, my parents um, came here from Vietnam as refugees. They uh, fled a war-torn Vietnam, and then they came here, and then they like created like 
created a beautiful family and started a successful business. And now I'm here, a triple threat to their legacy. <laughs> yeah. Um, the whole acting thing is kind of new. I'm, I, I, and even the, the comedy, I'm mostly a musician. I've like toured as a musician and um, uh, r the whole acting thing, like um, a friend recently came up to me and he's like, hey, I'm doing a short film and uh, I want you to be the lead in it. Like, would you be interested? And I said, absolutely. And I said, uh, like, what's the part? And he said, I actually uh, based the main character off of you and your life. He, um, <laughs> yeah, he said, uh, the main character is a failed musician. <laughs> And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely, I'll take the part. Um, so, yeah, with that, I'm going to do a song for you. Uh, yeah, um, we practiced this earlier. Um, all, all I have to do is just say, hit it. Yeah, you can, can you turn it up a little bit? Maybe a little bit more? Okay, yeah, cool. Group chats are so important in our times. We don't see each other because there is a global pandemic. Group chats bring us closer. We catch up with each other, give advice, and hold space for each other to talk. But my favorite thing about group chats is sharing funny things that we see on the internet but when my friend sends me something i've already seen i get excited because then i get to tell her i already saw that i already saw that i already saw that that meme you sent to me i already saw that i already saw that I already saw that, and that makes me better than you. Thank you. Yeah. It makes me so much better than you. Funny videos and funny memes let us laugh with each other and strengthen our bonds. So when my friend sends me something I've already seen, she just wants to bond, but I want to crush her dreams. There are different ways to make it known that I've already seen something sent to me. Like saying, oh, you already saw that. Or saying, haha, I love that. That is a subtle way to say, girl, that is old news. And I already saw that. I already saw that. I already saw that. That video you sent to me. I already saw that. I already saw that. I already saw that. It was finally only one time. I wouldn't laugh at it again. It was only funny one time. Like, it's not just funny videos and memes, but also movies, podcasts, books, and news headlines. If someone mentions something to me and I've never heard of it, it speaks to my character for some reason. And if you mention something that I've never heard of, I'll try to save face by being like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that sounds familiar, I think. No, yeah, I've heard of that somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. Why am I like this? Why am I like this? I need other things to do. I need other things to do. I need to feel better than you. I need to feel better than you. I'm better than you. Better than you. Better than you. <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay, sorry. Thank you, I'm DJ. The thing that draws me the most to stand up is just um, getting up in front of a live audience and connecting with them and making them laugh. 
even when I perform like music with my bands, I always enjoy bantering and making the crowd laugh in between songs. The thing that I like the least about doing comedy is having to go to shows and watch a lot of not good comedy or watching a lot of comedy that I don't enjoy or having to watch, um, yeah, people saying things that I find offensive and not funny. That's, that's probably the worst part about doing comedy. Stand up comedy was not really too much in my life when I was a kid. I didn't really know about it. Um, my, I think the first memory I have of stand up comedy is discovering Margaret Cho and her stand up. Um, and I remember just loving it and just like, I just like, uh, looked for like as much of her stand up I could find just like through like the internet or like even going to libraries and trying to look for her uh, like stand up CDs and stuff. Um, and I remember, yeah, just thinking that she was like so funny, really gravitated towards her just cause like she's like this like queer Asian woman. And um, yeah, I could kind of even, I'm not like, like, I'm not a woman or like Korean, but um, I remember that there were just like aspects of her stand up that really uh, like I felt reflected in and it resonated with me. I never really thought about doing stand up comedy, and that's why like I, I didn't do it until I think my first open mic, I was probably like 26 or 27 when I did it. And whereas like all my peers, I feel like they all started when they were like in their early 20s. Um, and so yeah, I never really thought that stand-up was something that I would do. It actually, uh, I only got into it because um, just like a couple of friends of mine, I would just always make them laugh and tell them stories that would make them laugh and they really encouraged me because they said that they were always just like, the things that you say like would be like really good material for stand up, so you should really try. And I would always just kind of like shrug it off, but eventually, yeah, I just like thought about it more, and then, um, yeah, I just wanted to try it. And around that time, I was also um, discovering like all these other kind of like queer uh, comedians, like Joel Kim Booster and like Bowen Yang and like Matt Rogers. And yeah, I got really into like listening to their podcasts and stuff and listening to them. And it also like, just like gave me the confidence to be like, yeah, I can do what they're doing. Yeah. The advice that I would give anyone that wants to try it is to just do it. Um, I think that's what kind of like everyone else says, but yeah, from when the moment, I decided I wanted to do it. It took me like weeks to gather up the kind of like courage to go and do it. Um, and I wasted a lot of time just being afraid. So I would say just go and do it. Sometimes jokes just happen in conversations with friends and um, I try to, in the moment, will like if I'm like at a restaurant with a friend or something and a joke appears, I will just like take time to sit quietly in front of them and write the joke down. Um, yeah, I'll, for my songs I normally have like an idea in my phone and then I will just, yeah, make a beat and then try to try to make it happen. I don't know, it's, I also, for my comedy song writing and like my not comedy music, it kind of just happens. I, I do just like black out and then the song just appears and that happens with my comedy music and my regular not comedy music. Yeah, I, I've never been heckled. That's like, I think that kind of shows how, how uh, short I've been doing comedy for. I feel like if you've been doing it long enough, you, you must be getting heckled like pretty 
often. Uh, one of the benefits of doing musical comedy is that I can just go right into a song and no one can interrupt me. Uh, and that works to my advantage, but it also sometimes doesn't because sometimes I, I there has been moments where I've just performed a full three minute song and no one thought it was funny the entire time and it was just silent. Um, but it was and it was awkward for me, but it felt fine that I just had to like get through the next like couple minutes of the song that I could just leave right after. Um, and the benefit of doing a song is that whenever you finish a song, people will clap, even if they like it or not. And that feels not the worst, that people have to clap at the end, even if you, if like a song just did not connect with them at all. There are some shows where I know that the crowd will enjoy a specific kind of set and I do kind of like adjust my set according to where like where I'm performing that night um yeah for example yeah so if I'm doing something like Havana Man your show or when I'm doing Millennial Line where I know the crowd is gonna be like a pretty like majority of, if I know the majority of the crowd is like queer people of color who are like millennials or whatever, they'll enjoy a specific set. And yeah, so I will kind of, we'll have specific material for different shows. I think relying on songs is like my safe zone. So I'm always trying to go up on stage with a really loose idea of what I'm gonna do. And I think to me, to me, that feels very like scary and risky just because I don't know what I'm gonna say. And, but yeah, that's when like good jokes and stuff like appear in those moments when I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I don't really know what I would change. It's, it, it does need a lot of change. <laughs> um, the comedy world needs more representation and um, yeah, I think like people who are like booking comedy shows just like need to take more chances on like queer people and people of color and device, d diversifying their, 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 their lineups. Yeah, it would be cool to see more like variety shows and, and like I think like most stand-up shows here in at least in Vancouver are just just like pure stand-up um, and not much else and it'd be nice to, to see more variety like whenever I'm doing a set I'm normally the only person in a, in a lineup that's doing something besides stand-up and it feels a bit awkward sometimes to like to have like eight comics go up and do stand up and then in the middle there's just me doing a song um yeah it'd be nice to see more like more yeah different stuff <laughs> the most fun i've had was at the sunday service at the Fox. It was just, um, it was just a really good show. There was a large crowd and they were just, um, yeah, really responding to what I was doing and yeah, it was really fun. Um, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> I need those follows <laughs> at DQOJR. We love to make you laugh with all the jokes we have. That's why we do what we do. You're why we are funny. Richmond to Surrey, Delta and Deep Cove. We love to make you laugh. We love to make you laugh. We love to make you Vancouver, we love your land.
It's why we are funny.